right back. Some women spend their entire lives trying to figure out what does he really want, and they never find out. My next guest is the author of a book called What Men Really Want. He is going to tell us. Please welcome Dr. Herb Goldberg. Okay. What do men really want? Well, I, I think once you get to know men, you find that most men are actually quite lonely. You know, women talk about men not wanting commitment, but I think most men have a big personal vacuum in their life. Much so more than I think, women, I find. Much more than women, and so I think more than anything else, men want a friend. And I think a friend, however, is somebody who really knows you and likes you for who you are, doesn't blame you, takes equal responsibility for the problems. Uh, under the worst of circumstances, men want to be left alone, but uh, in a good relationship, they want a good friend. But a good friend would be, theoretically, the girlfriend, or the wife, or the lover, right? Well, you know, Could it be uh, another man? You, you know, men, men don't confide in other men on pers in a personal level. When you talk to men about who their best friend is, they'll usually say it's, it's the woman in their life. So I think they look to women for friendship because they don't have that kind of intimate friendship with other men. Why is that? I find that very interesting. I find that absolutely true. That well, my good friends are men. They talk to me much more than to other men. Right. I, I think a lot of it is unconscious, but men are very competitive with each other. They're afraid to be vulnerable with each other. They tend to be very mechanical in their communication with each other. They don't trust each other. And so most men are very lonely. In fact, the men's movement today, uh, whatever that is, uh, involves a lot of men who are reaching out to other men because they know they can't relate to them. What are the three biggest mistakes that women make with men? I think there's, uh, I think the biggest mistake a woman makes with a man is to make a relationship too central, uh, make the relationship too important. Uh, the second one, I think, is giving up her you mean, identity. In other words, don't make the relationship the center of your life. But yeah, shouldn't I mean, a relationship uh, be the center of your life? Well, no, often you'll see a, a woman, she has a wonderful career, she'll have uh, friends, she'll have interests, and a man comes into her life, she starts to abandon them all. She puts pressure on the relationship. The moment she puts pressure on the relationship, the man closes up. And sometimes he even feels betrayed because he really wants her to stay that, that dynamic person that she was. The second biggest mistake is giving up her identity. And the third is pressuring for commitment too early. Pressuring for commitment too early is like a man pressuring for sex too early. Right. When a man pressures for sex too early, a woman feels used. And when a, ma a woman uh, pressures for commitment too early, the man doesn't feel it has anything to do with him, it has to do with her needs. Uh, when does a woman know this just isn't working? At what point do you say, I I'm at, I've got to get out of this? Oh, well, I think first she, she needs to know herself. You know, if she has a pattern of it not working with one man after another, then I think she ought to look at what she might be doing or the expectations she might be bringing to the relationship. However, if the man she's with uh, shows no uh, motivation to work on things, to improve things, and basically has a, an abusive attitude, then maybe it's time to get out. What about cheating? Let me ask you. Um, is, there, is there a certain kind of woman that men cheat on? Do you know, do you know what I'm saying? Have you ever cheated on your girlfriends? <laughs> <laughs> no, no tell the truth. Oh, I... He would tell us a Geraldo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Geraldo, I cheated. So you can tell it to me. Well, okay, I will tell you. I think it's something you outgrow. Yeah, okay. When, when I was in my 20s, yeah, it was awful. I yeah. can't believe I'm, I still survive. I wasn't shot dead right. or something, you know, like, but you, you outgrow it. Yeah. What about you? Well, I'm glad you're giving me this opportunity to announce this on national yeah. television. <laughs> <laughs> With your oh, wife sitting yeah, in the audience. Exactly. Yes, honey, I cheated. <laughs> we'll get over it. Uh, no, I think that's true. I, I think when you, you get to a certain age, I think it's a function of age, you get to a certain age, if you're cheating, you're cheating on yourself. And this, you've arrived at this point in your life where this marriage is one of the most important things, if not the most important thing in your life. Right. So if you cheat on that, you, che you cheat on yourself. You know, you, know you, can, you can cheat in different ways. I mean, you can actually cheat with, uh, by having an affair. You can just cheat by withdrawing from the relationship. I think men uh, need stimulation in a relationship, and when a woman becomes too accommodating, too selfless, uh, too much of a guilt maker, yeah. he, he withdraws, he loses interest in her, and then he'll fantasize about other women, which is next door to cheating. Yeah. A lot of men, men won't cheat, but they're not interested in their wives either. Let me ask you, which I feel very sorry for, we talked about this this morning in the, in the uh, room, in my, my office, my, my staff, but, but why don't you talk, Joe, without stuttering? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Men are getting very mixed signals from women. We're saying to them, we want you sensitive. We want you to look at that rose and say, that's beautiful. And we also want you to go downstairs and say, 
Who's in this house? I'll kill you. How? Well, it I must think, be so hard to... Well, I think that we're all giving mixed signals to each other because our awareness of our roles is way ahead of our personal changes. So most of us are very sophisticated in the ideas about what we want in a relationship. But our gut reactions are still very traditional. And when, that, when there's a big split between somebody who's very aware intellectually but has very traditional needs, you can really drive your, your partner crazy with conflicting messages. Be strong, be sensitive, uh, open up, don't open up. Uh, and uh, and uh, men, do this, men do it with women, too. They also give women mixed messages, telling them they want them to be independent, but then objecting to if they have too much of a life of their own. You're going, yes, yes, yes. the same thing. It's exactly what I see uh, as a therapist, is you have a man who wants this independent, wonderful woman he fell in love with, and at the same time would really like someone to make him dinner and to help him choose his clothing and to, you know, listen to him every night when he comes home. So I think for women, too, it's, it's a difficulty of keeping their strength in the relationship and not becoming accommodating and a woman that he didn't fall in love with initially. There's a strong tendency to go back to old role-playing once you get into a relationship. The brain is very weak compared to the emotions. Yeah. Well, you go back to old role play. In other words... You bring to uh, a new relationship all the things that you... I've worked, with, uh, I've worked with couples in my own practice who they both have dynamic careers. They're both very educated. But the moment they interact intimately at home, uh, she becomes the accommodating, selfless, selfless, weepy woman. He becomes a detached, cold, critical male. They're, they've gone back to being mother and father. And, uh, and those are sort of the deeper gut-level reactions. They're hard to work on, but they're exciting to work on. Yeah, but boy. It's, it's hard a, work. Relationships are hard work. Relationships sure. are hard work. When we come back, we're going to find out what men are really afraid of and the biggest myths that women have about men. So stay with us.